I'm Anthony. I've been playing poker for a living since 2019. Hit that intro. Don't slow roll me if you get quad fours, man. You folded King King Jack Jack? You owe me $350. <laughs> Your money should be in there, too. Did you bluff me? Would I, would I ever bluff? I'm leaving out there. I'm on no, tilt. <laughs> tilt. Thank you, sir. I would not lie to you, sir. I told you I had a full house. Doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> This episode, I'm playing a 1020 fixed limit mixed game at Georgetown Poker Club in Georgetown, Texas. This hand, we're playing Badesi, a split pot triple draw game where you're trying to make a low, the best low being ace two, three, four, five, and then also trying to make a Badoogie, which is four cards of different suits not paired, ace two, three, four of different suits being the nuts. There are two callers for $10, and in the small blind, I look down at ace two. 6, 10, queen. I call, and the big blind checks. On the first draw, I get it rid of my queen and 10, drawing two cards. I pick up the 3 and king. I improve my low draw, picking up the 3 of spades. So I have a solid draw to the low half of the pot. However, I unfortunately have only two of the four suits, so the best I can hope for is to make a 3-card badoogie, which would lose that half of the pot to a 4-card badoogie. It checks to me, and I bet, there is a fold and then two calls. I draw one while my opponents are drawing three and two cards respectively. A good sign. I pick up the seven of hearts, completing my five card low with one draw remaining, and giving me a seven high three card badoogie. On this second draw, the bets double. So when it's checked to me, given I've made my hand and both my opponents were drawing more cards than I was, I bet 20 and both of my opponents call. I announce to the dealer that I am Pat, which means I will not be drawing any additional cards on this final draw. Both of my opponents have improved and are now only drawing one card each. If either of them already has a four-card Badoogie, they may be free-rolling me here. When it checks to me, I don't like my play here, which is to bet. Yes, I have a made low, but a 7-6 low is rough. I don't have a four-card Badoogie either, so there's a risk I'll get raised when I could have just check-called. There's one call, and then the player who checked check-raises me to 40. I call and get shown the bad news. My opponent has the wheel and a three-card perfect Badoogie, showing down ace, two, three, four, five, and I get scooped. We're still playing Badesi, and in this hand, the ace of spades has been exposed. One player limps, and I raise, holding ace, five, six, jack, king. I have a made four-card Badoogie to the jack, but I intend to break it, as I'm drawing to a six low and a six Badoogie, with three draws to come. The small blind, big blind, and the limper all call. Both blinds draw two cards, the limper draws three, and I draw two. I pick up on my first draw an 8-7, giving me a four-card seven-high badoogie and a really rough eight-high low. The small blind leads out for 10, both opponents call, and I raise to 20. My hand isn't super strong, but I want to potentially get an opponent with a made hand that may beat me on one side to break it, but it's limit poker in Texas, and they all call. My opponents are now drawing 1, 1, and 2, and I announce I'm Pat. This is a dangerous spot because if my opponents make their hands, they're more than likely going to be stronger than mine. However, having the ace of spades exposed at the start of the hand helps reduce their ability to outdraw me. And with three of them drawing, it's possible they're all blocking one another from getting there. They all check, and I bet 20, and all three call. That I wasn't check-raised is comforting, at least. The small blind stands Pat. That's not a great sign. The big blind draws one, the limper draws two, and I opt to stand pat and hope I can win at least one side of this pot. I think in hindsight I should break my eight, since my seven low badoogie is still intact, and I have a shot to improve my five card low, so it's unlikely it'll be good against the small blind who is standing pat. After the final draw, everyone checks to me. I don't see any value in betting here and opening myself up to being check raised like last time, so I check it back. Well, holy shit! I don't know how I did it with the small blind standing pat, but Somehow I'm good for both sides of the pot. I'm going to scoop the whole thing, which is the dream while playing split pot limit poker. We're still playing Badesi, and Under the Gun has raised to 20. I'm next to act, and I make the call holding a 3-4-5-8-9 with a 3-card 8-high Badoogie. This is a bit rough, and I think if I'm going to play this, I'd be better served raising my opponent to isolate with position rather than risk getting myself caught in the middle against multiple players drawing as an 8-high low and Badoogie draw aren't great against the field. Well, now the player right behind me raises it to 30, then it gets capped, and 
Somehow we go to the first draw in a cap pot of four bets with five players drawing. I opt to just draw one, two of my opponents are also drawing one, and the other two are both drawing two cards. We unfortunately pick up the three of clubs, pairing our other three, and giving us way too many clubs. There's a $10 bet. I make a mistake, I believe, and call, and it gets raised behind me, and we're going five ways to the second draw. The player behind me announces they are pat. Not great news. I draw the seven of spades, giving me one of the worst eight lows possible, and still not getting me to my Badugi. The player who is pat bets 20, everyone calls, and I close the action, making another mistake, I believe, calling the 20. My hand is just too rough with one draw to come. Ideally, if I'm going to continue here, I should be check-raising and standing pat, in the hopes my opponents will break a hand currently beating us. And not only do I call the bet, but now I stand pat, so I should have been check-raising and standing pat instead. It's been a few years since I played mixed games, and the rust is showing. We all check to the guy who's been betting like mad. He bets 20, and three of us call. The player who is betting heavy turns over 2 3, 4 5, 6, with a three card Badoogie to the 6. And at the other end of the table, an opponent shows down Ace 2 6 7 King with a 7 high, 4 card Badoogie, meaning my bad decisions have yet again cost me multiple bets as I was drawing against hands I couldn't beat. Okay, still playing some of that sweet Badacy. Maybe I'll play better this time. I'm in the big blind and look down at Ace 3 4 7 10 with a 3-card Badoogie to my 4. A very nice start. There's one limper, then a raise to 20, and 3 callers. I call, the limper calls, and we are going 6-handed to the first draw. With 3 draws left, I decide to break my 7-low draw to give myself a better shot at making the nut Badoogie. And we're rewarded on the first draw, making a pretty strong 6-low Badoogie. When it's checked to me, I bet 10, there's 5 callers, and we are going 6 ways to a second draw. I draw one, picking up the useless Jack of Diamonds. Fortunately, having the made six low Badoogie, I'm able to continue betting, and I put out 20. Well, it's still Texas, and one bet isn't going to fold out these diehards, so we're still going six ways to the final draw. I draw one, picking up the very timely five of clubs, giving me a six low and a five Badoogie, a pretty powerful hand that I'm expecting will give me the scoop. They check to me, I continue firing, I get four callers, and I show it down, and once again, the ice cream man is back in town because it's another scoop, baby. I think I'm scooping, guys. I got a five doogie and a six. Yep. Oh, you're yeah. scooping. Woo. I finally actually had a doogie and a straight. I'm happy. Oh, yeah. That's, That's a pretty good hand. It's a pretty strong hand. Yeah, it's not going to lose any. <laughs> nope. That's a good All right, there we go. It's about time. Thank you, Polka Jesus. Keep watching everybody get like no duty or no straights and figure a nine, nine, eight, and a eight duty was a hole. Yeah. All right, this round we're playing Badoosey, which means aces are now bad for low. We're trying to make a Badoogie with the nuts now being two, three, four, five of different suits, and then a two to seven triple draw hand. The nuts being two, three, four, five, seven. Straights and flushes are bad in deuce to seven triple draw. I'm dealt. 2-2, two, 4-6, two, Jack. There's two callers, and with the action on me, I raise it up with a three-card Badoogie to my six. Having half the deuces in the deck is huge here, as these are key cards our opponents will be looking for. The small blind folds, but the big blind and both limpers call, so we're four-handed to the first draw. Also, I just want to mention that I need to be careful with my hand. If I pick up a five and a three, I'll make a straight, which is bad for the deuce to seven half of the pot. My opponents draw one, three, and three, I draw two. I pair my four, but I also pick up an eight of hearts, giving me a badoogie, and allowing me to draw to an eight low that won't make a straight, giving me potential to scoop. When it checks to me, I've made half my hand, and I'm drawing strong to a decent eight low, so I bet ten. Having two of my opponents drawing three on the previous street is helpful, although the one player who drew only one card is someone I'll need to be careful against. We go three ways to the second draw. I dump my four of diamonds, while one of my opponents strangely stands pat, but didn't check raise me. I pick up another four. So now I've held half the deuces in the deck and 75% of the fours in the deck. These are all key cards to make low hands. So it's interesting that with two draws, one of my opponents is already standing pat. They all check to me and I opt to check it back. I checked. Did he check? Yeah, he checked first. Oh. Uh, I will check too. <laughs> You're <laughs> fat. I pick up a junky queen of hearts and I call a bet from my opponent only to see the bad news. 
The other opponent who is drawing shows down a 7 low Badoogie. And unfortunately, the player who stood pat winds up having the last 4 in the deck and one of the last deuces in the deck in their hand, showing down an 8 low, meaning I'm getting scooped. Fortunately, this is a relatively small pot. I'm under the gun playing Badoogie again, so trying to make a 2-3-4-5 Badoogie and a 2-3-4-5-7 triple draw hand. I start off fairly good holding 2-2-5-6-10. Two, two, I limp in, but I think I should be raising having two key cards. There's a raise behind me, and we wind up going to our first draw four-handed. One opponent is drawing three. You don't want to be that guy. I decide to draw one. I hold on to two of my deuces since I may pick up a low card that matches one of their suits, getting me closer to making my Badoogie. The original Razor is Pat. The other player is drawing two. I pick up a seven of spades, giving me a solid draw to a seven, but I won't be able to make a four card Badoogie with this hand unless I break it. The player who is Pat bets 10 and we all call. I'm going to give you some. I'm, I'm never going to see that $10 again. That's a free $10. <laughs> My lunch tomorrow. Three, I'm one. giving you that free $10. Y'all uh, drawing one? Yeah, no, one. one, one? What the hell am I doing in this hand? <laughs> <laughs> Contributing to the poker economy, sir. Great news after our second draw is we pick up a four of clubs, giving us a made seven low, plus a three card to the five for the Badoogie side. We all check to the Pat player who bets 20. There's one caller and I check raised to 40. They both call and we're going three ways to the final draw. I stand Pat. After they draw, I bet 20 and I get two callers. I need a perfect, perfect fucking card to beat either one of you. I don't know if it's there. I got a seven and a a, uh, three card five. I haven't looked at that one yet. Oh, okay. He's called blind. I've got an eight. Oh, you need a seven. I told you these triple draws. Seven of hearts. hearts. Seven of hearts. I need a perfect fucking card. I don't have an eight eight. No I'm more in the drawing. I'm not, I'm not yeah. gonna yeah. He's got a, he does have a Paired him up. Yep. Oh, and it's a good. Like it. Paired him up. I got nothing. Uh, so, seven, yeah, seven, I got seven, a seven, so we chop him. I'm not always positive. Yeah, I kept drawing one card. I had a I couldn't fucking hit it. That's a good draw, though. With your hand. Drawing for a scooping Yeah, I'm just going to do it. And I didn't see a seven hearts out there. No, I didn't. That would have been a monster. That would have been a really well. In this hand, we're playing Archie with two community cards. Archie is a high-low split game with a qualifier. That means to win the high half of the pot, you need a pair of nines or better. And on the low side, you need to make an eight low or better. There are also community cards in this version of the game that everyone will share, the first being dealt immediately, the last being dealt after the last draw. The community card to start is the Deuce of Clubs. I'm on the small blind and dealt Ace-2-4, Jack King. Under the gun raises to 20, and there's three callers. I come along. The big blind is well, so we're going six ways to the first draw. You gotta love Texas. I draw two, holding on to the deuce in my hand, despite there being a deuce as a community card. I'm shooting for a low, but there's a possibility I could make two pair of trips here as well to play for high. On my first draw, I get a pretty decent result, picking up the five jack. It gives me a shot at making the wheel. We all check to one player who bets 10, and we go six ways to a second draw. Now that I have a solid four cards to the wheel, I can get rid of my deuce to try and pick up the low and straight. Hold my wine, bitches! Well, hello there! I pick up the beautiful 3-7, giving me the wheel. The stone cold nuts on the low side, plus a pretty solid hand for the high side of the pot. Now we've got scoop potential. With action on me, I bet 20. There is a raise behind me to 40. Two callers. I make it 60, and it gets capped to 80 behind me. One player calls, one folds, and I call as well. We're going three ways to the last draw. Myself and the guy who capped it are both Pat. The lady draws one. Uh, what about the last? Is there... oh, wait, there's a bet. There's a bet. There's a bet first. No, no, no she has to get her card. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you stay out of this, man. <laughs> I thought you were talking about turning the card out. One card. Now there's a now there. Wait, you don't put it out yet? No. There's you a bet. Then put it out the yes. bet again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just like stud. There's exact same in the budget. A bet to stud. Okay. Now we get 20. I bet 20. My opponent raises to 40 behind me. She calls, and now I'm worried the guy raising also has the wheel, and we may be getting quartered by the third player, so I just call. The community card is the Jack of Spades, not changing anything. Fearing I'm possibly being quartered, I just check. My opponent bets 20. The lady calls, and I call. We're getting quartered. You think? Yeah. Okay. I don't think so. I got the low. I got fives full. 
Oh. Yeah, definitely not getting quartered. He well, has a boat. You got a wheel. I got the wheel. Unless yeah. she has quad twos. No, I was waiting on the ace or the nine o'clock. So y'all should just yeah. chop it. Yeah. Okay. I thought you had the low for sure. I thought we both had the low. Yeah. Oh, no. I started out with two pairs. Well, okay. Five <laughs> yep. Chopping everything. Yep. I was right, right for that nine o'clock to come, baby. If you hit your one fucking outer, this time it would have been two outer. Two outer. No, it actually wouldn't have been because he had the ace. It would have yeah. been a one yeah. fucking outer. Now, I didn't think I was getting the ace. So if you hit it again. That's what we got. You, you hit a one outer once. You don't get to do it twice. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I felt pretty good with my right, Dylan. All right, blinds are going up. That hand took so long, the blind levels are going up. In this hand, we're still playing Archie, and the community card comes out the Two of Spades. I start out with a pretty solid draw to the nut low, plus a wheel on the button, holding ace two, three, three, four. We wind up going six ways to the first draw. Since there's a community deuce on the board, and I paired my threes, I dump the deuce and three of diamonds, and I draw two. I pick up an ace and a six, giving me the second nut low, plus a pair of aces for high, qualifying for both sides of the pot. When everyone checks, I make the easy bet of ten, but it's Texas, so we get four callers, and then we go five ways to the second draw. Given we've already folded a deuce and a three, and now hold two of the aces, the chances of us beating beat for low are extremely slim, so we can pretty much assume we have half the pot locked up. However, there are still two draws remaining, and while our one pair of aces might wind up good for high, it's likely it won't be strong enough. So I break them for a chance to draw to the six high straight, hoping to pick up a five. Unfortunately, we don't get what we're looking for, picking up the third three in the deck. One player bets 20, one caller, and I don't like my play here, which is to just call. I should be pumping this pot like crazy because it's even more difficult now for someone to beat the low half of the pot we expect to have locked up. And these Texas players do not like to fold. But I just call. We get two additional callers behind, and we are going five ways to the final draw. I obviously ditch the three of diamonds, and I pick up the useless queen of spades, missing my high draw, but I still have potential for the community card to get me there for a potential scoop. They all check to me, and I make the easy bet of 20. Two players fold, two call. The community card is the ten of diamonds. They check, I bet again, and I get two callers. So I got a perfect six. Six perfect. Okay, so I've got it straight. My opponent shows down King Six Five Four Three, having made a straight by using the community card of the Deuce on the board. But luckily, I do have her beat for the low half of the pot, and we're going to split this one. I paired my Ace, I paired my Deuce. So I was like, Come on. <laughs> yeah, me too. I kept throwing away the cards I got. Hey, it's Anthony. Thank you guys for tuning in. It was a ton of fun hosting the first ever Mixed Mondays over at Georgetown Poker Club. This session was from a couple of weeks ago, and I managed to turn a profit at the end of the session of $944, which for a 1020 limit game is pretty fantastic. It didn't hurt that I ran extremely pure later in the session after I shook the rust off. It had been a while since I had played mixed games, and I made a number of mistakes early on, but later on I ran very, very pure, making a lot of wheels, a lot of badoogies. Now, you'll see that I showed a number of draw games as well as games with uh, flops. I also played a number of stud-based games, but it's really difficult to include those in editing because I'd have to keep track of a lot of cards that had been folded, you know, the up cards, and it's just, it's really hard for me to put that into the vlog. So while we do have those in the mix for those interested in playing, I'm unfortunately not filming those, but any draw games, any flop-based games, those will uh, make the cut. Now, for those of you interested in playing at Georgetown Poker in Georgetown, Texas, we are hosting this Mix Mondays at 7 p.m. every Monday night. If you're a VIP member, if you have the VIP uh, monthly membership, you get to play free of charge, no time charges with that membership every Monday, any hours. And you get five bonus hours any time of the week for that month. So you'll have an additional five hours if you want to play a Friday night or something like that. So it's a great value if you're going to be playing uh, more than one time. And uh, if you're going to be playing regularly, obviously it pays for itself. So great option. We'd love to have you come down again, doing it every Monday. We just did it this past Monday. We had two tables of action going, so it was a ton of fun. Also very excited to be heading to Las Vegas next week for the 2023 World Series of Poker. I will be playing my first ever World Series of Poker events. I have the $1,500 Badoogie. 
the $1,000 8 max PLO and the $3 million guaranteed $300 buy-in gladiators of poker on my schedule. Now, obviously, if I make a day two or day three, that's going to uh, prevent me from playing some of those events. So it's possible I might swap in another event at another property, depending on how things go, or I may play some cash sessions. But either way, if you're going to be out in Vegas and you see me, come up, say hi. I love meeting uh, viewers of the vlog. And if you would like to purchase any action, I am selling at no markup. Thank you so much to those who have already bought. And you can head on over to Stake Kings. There's no markup on my package. So feel free to buy a piece and uh, sweat with me on this. And other than that, that's it for this week. We'll see you in the next episode. Also, I'll leave a link down below for the Stake Kings. You know, after watching a video like this, sometimes I'll like it, sometimes I'll leave a comment, and sometimes I'll subscribe. Sometimes I'll even do all three.